Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and in this video we're going to tackle five tips about using AI in instructional design. If you want to know more about me, check out the comments where I'll provide additional links to things like my newsletter and other resources you can find out more. So we've got a lot to cover here, and these are our main objectives. We're going to go through these quickly, but there's a lot of help and follow-up resources on the resource document that is also in the comments, uh, and you can find in that link right there. It includes all of the text here in this, this talk, resources to further explore, and the prompts that I'll cover here. Uh, I'm putting, I can't stress enough that the resource is really helpful, and also it's covered with a Creative Commons license, so you're welcome to share it. So our first focus is thinking about how we might be using generative AI in the context of our work. What are the things we need to bring to how we think about how we use this tool in our respective institutions? So. Instructional designers are really represent the explorers of the campus. They are at the forefront of figuring out technology, learning science, and playfulness. They're trying to figure out the things and think about structures, systems, and implementation often long before leadership realizes something needs to be done, and well before faculty are often ready to do something. Given that IDs really need to bring and approach this with a sense of balance, thinking about possibly all the things that can be done um, and all the ways this tool might represent those possibilities. I encourage leading with interest and enthusiasm. Generative AI is going to have lots of problems and faculty will have lots of insights into what those problems are. Yet, IDs need to be a voice in the institution that also points to the possibilities. Some of the ways of doing this are framing the versatility of generative AI and what that can mean for every part of the institution. The more you can think through how it is going to be helpful to everyone, the more buy-in you'll get. And it's not that I'm saying we should all be drinking the Kool-Aid, but it's a technology that's coming fast and quickly throughout lots of parts of society. If we don't have a means of thinking about it, helping others to learn it, and preparing folks for a world with a lot more AI, we're going to be doing a disservice to our institutions. Helping different constituents within the educational spaces in your institution is going to build social capital. And that's something instructional design folks often need to have regularly in order to help different things get done. The biggest proposition you can offer folks is the reduction in tedious tasks. There's plenty to be gained there, but we can't do it without being clear that we're not engaging in this work critically. We need to acknowledge and regularly discuss some of the genuine concerns about generative AI, such as the implications and new challenges this represents for our students, uh, for our students' work, the full range of biases that surround these tools, from the data sources to the organizational uh, decisions on how to present it, uh, present it to the output guardrails, and of course the various impacts on the for its various impacts from the environment to the economy to upcoming elections. Finally, we need to have, we need to tell less and show more. Showcasing different tools such as text and image, image generators, as well as those AI tools that focus on research uh, oriented outputs would be quite important. Additionally, you need to show and share useful prompts. Always have some starter prompts that they can get started with quickly. Finally, get folks playing with it and doing so in groups. Their sharing of insights and iterations will amplify their learning in other people's interests. But what about how we're using it now and how we might be? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and getting comfortable with it. So what are some of the ways you might start using it? This is the low-hanging fruit that can get you comfortable with using it. This might include having generative AI produce date listings or initial communications you plan to send out. It can also be getting quick visuals without ceaseless searching, as well as creating some basic outlines to projects you want to pursue. As you get settled in to using it, there are some things that I think is this is where it gets more interesting. You can use it to refine and update your content uh, that you have or that you're working on. You, can also have it aid you in creating content for, pro for professional development and training you're doing with faculty or students, uh, and with different emerging video, audio, and image tools, it could also make some room for more content by instructional designers who find themselves with a lot of, without a lot of multimedia support uh, at their institution. Finally, 
the potential ways that folks are starting to really think about it and learn about those and start to play with it, including these different approaches, such as course designing with faculty. Uh, while some faculty won't be sure of this, other faculty will greatly appreciate not starting with a blank slate. Furthermore, using it to generate feedback can also be interesting. Uh, a colleague of mine is doing this to provide feedback to faculty about their materials, and it's great because it takes the personal element out. If the ID is giving the feedback, that can be really hard to navigate. If the AI is giving the feedback, it's impersonal and changes the experience. And of course, there's potential for using this to make sense of data to improve the learning experience. So what does it look like to use these tools with others, and particularly faculty? Some of the low-hanging fruit is just to show faculty how to use it to craft objectives and draft content, show how they might how generative AI can work as a tool to build a bit more quickly or just to get an ugly first draft. My favorite idea uh, to show them is how to create examples that they can then use. For instance, creating good and bad examples of, an ass of assignment submissions, uh, we often struggle to come up with bad examples to guide students' work, but AI can be really helpful in this regard. Guiding faculty and using it to develop assessment, whether it is to be discussion prompts or quizzes, along with creating the assignment guidelines and key ans answer keys, this can really win over some faculty for the reduction in their work. You can also guide them in creating personas with which they can think through their teaching practices as well as generate case studies for their courses. There's also possibilities for improving accessibility, including creating alt text for images, cleaning up transcripts, and adjusting a text to a different reader at a different level. Then there's ways you can really get faculty to think big. Using AI to enhance course alignment, a personal reviewer of the course that helps them see the gaps in a way that isn't grounded in personal exchange between faculty and instructional designer, that can happen anytime they need it. Getting them to think about how it might be used with students in the class to better understand the impact of AI on, the, on their discipline is definitely a high watermark. In helping them think about the ways it can be useful in research, uh, pro in the research process, can certainly open their eyes to the possibility of these tools. Okay, what are the practices we want to encourage and discourage as we use generative AI? Particularly because it's still early in the understanding all the implications of these tools, we want to keep a few things in mind. Definitely continue to try different things. In the guide, you'll see lots of different prompts to try out. Try these out, look to see how others are using it. Collect as many use cases as you can to help you think through how best to do it. Along those lines, try different tools. Try to learn the contours of AI across the different areas of use. Document your usage. Don't, you know, meaning making, you, this means you want to make sure that you can keep track of what you're doing with it. This is helpful for you for your own development as well as for folks you work with so that you can encourage other usage. Of course, uh, you'll also want to note when you're using it. This doesn't mean you have to like perfectly cite things, but you want to make sure that you're indicating usage, both to just make it visible and so that people know what, what the work is. Finally, build out your guidance for faculty interested in using AI. That should be born out of your institutional policy if one exists, where you should develop different frameworks for engaging or learning about generative AI based on the different dispositions. That is, the responses to generative AI by many faculty fall into a limited number of camps. Create the structures and guidance for each camp. But what shouldn't you do? Well, you shouldn't hide that you're using it. Use it and talk about your use. Make it normal. Lots of folks are using it, but we're not talking about it. I have to say that, I have to say, because I keep seeing folks doing this, Please do not put any student work or data into generative AI. For that matter, don't put any faculty or staff data in or work without permission. And then finally, be mindful about the conversation around copyright, copywriting generative AI work. There have been some rulings and more to come. Whatever you, you make, be aware that you may not have the full rights to it. So just keep that in mind and keep that in mind with the faculty that you're working with. Okay. Now let's actually look at some prompts that can be helpful in this work. So there are four areas that I find AI to be incredibly useful in ways that contribute to my work and reduces the amount of time I need to work on things. We'll look at each of these. 
One thing to note here is that I'm definitely going to briefly show and talk about the prompt, but what follows is several screens with lots of text. Don't race to try to read it all. Uh, that's not the goal. Rather, I just want you to get a sense of what it, what it puts out. All the prompts and responses from Generative AI can be found in the resource document that's in that link in the comments, and sorry, in the description along with the uh, with other prompts to try out. So these next slides are mostly to give you a flavor of what can be done with it so that you can go and explore uh, that document and tools on your own. Okay, here's one that both us and the faculty grapple with constantly. Getting a list of dates for a given semester or just mapping out a schedule of some sorts. This prompt simply asks to list all the Tuesdays in a given time as well as the holidays. As you can see from the results, what takes 5 to 10 minutes of toggling between screens is now produced in under 30 seconds. When it, comes to brain, when it comes to brainstorming, AI can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of, and therefore extend your thinking about what you might do or how you might do it. In this prop, I asked it for three of the most effective, supportive strategies to use with part-time faculty to succeed in asynchronous learning. I also provided a detailed explanation of what to include with each strategy. So as you can see, it pinpointed several important practices, explained what they were, how you might approach implementation and ways to assess and evaluation. Now I'm only including one here, but it gave me three and I could have asked for three more or five more and it would have continued to list things. These are great starts to think about how to approach this particular challenge I'm presenting. And the thing is, I can like I can do this work, absolutely. But the ideas I got in two minutes would have taken me probably an hour or more to really map out as this did. So it just jump starts that brainstorming process. Now, say I want to follow up with one of those ideas for creating professional development for part-time faculty to enhance their asynchronous teaching and learning. Here, I asked the AI to provide a first draft of a plan that would focus on portfolio development for part-time faculty. The prompt asked the AI to draft to produce a first draft of such a plan with some particulars I would want I would want in place. Again, this is a partial representation of the fuller output, but it is already giving me plenty to work with and start adapting and adjusting. The result is I'm not starting at ground zero, but further along. Additionally, if I, I had a plan from a previous project that I want to use the same structure, I can always provide that as, a, as part of the context and say, adapt the structure of that plan and develop a, a new plan that focuses on the subject. Finally, there's using it for analysis. In this case, I took anonymous student evaluations, I double checked the data and removed any personal information, and then I asked the AI to analyze the data to summarize, uh, analyze and provide insights and recommendations regarding the faculty usage of the learning management system. Again, this is the short version, but I can assure you the full results are eye-opening and now give me an opportunity to plan, to plan for better supports of both students and faculty. This feedback we get every four weeks at my institution, and while I want to dig into it, my skills are lacking that it would take a lot of time to really do this well because we're dealing with qualitative data. But I, So I can't produce this level of insight and understand my own as a, as a team of one, but AI can certainly help me do it more. So these are the five tips for the session. We've covered a lot. Uh, and I think, you know, we, this is really just the tip of the iceberg of the iceberg. The resources that are in that link are also definitely something you want to check out. And then of course we have a bonus tip. This bonus tip uh, is something to improve your prompting outputs with generative AI. I've been using it for months and it's been super helpful. The first question you should always ask generative AI is asking it to improve the actual question you want to ask. In this case, I usually start with the prompt, improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model. And then I insert my prompt. The new prompt it provides is the prompt that I actually use. And I always get better results from the generative AI. So all I'm doing here is telling generative AI, improve this question so I can ask you a better question. And it is extremely helpful in all of this. So thank you all very much. And if you have questions, throw them in the comments or feel free to follow me on my Substack and uh, catch me there. Thank you so much.